Hello, this is a gaming tutorial, so obviously I'm going to make you watch an excessively long animation of my channel name. That's what you clicked here to see, right? Actually, this is with no filler, and we're going to dive right in. The remastered game has not been released yet at the time of this video, but everything I'm showing you will work when that comes out in September? <sighs> this thing is never right. Anyway, there are seven different character classes, each with 30 unique skills, so if you're new to the game or it's been a while, all that can be overwhelming. So I'm trying to answer the big questions. What's the best all-around character in the game? How do you duel with that character? What's the best gear for that character? How do you get that gear if you're starting from scratch? And lastly, if you're starting the game or a new ladder season, is it wise to make this character first? I'll answer that last one right now. For my first character, I want something cheap but powerful. Something that can easily find the best items for itself and for the other characters I make later. A lot of people would say that a Blizzard or Frozen Orb Sorceress is the best starter character for this purpose. And they're probably right, but when D2 Resurrected comes out, I'm going to make a Paladin using Blessed Hammer, which is known as a Hammerdin. Why? Because whether you play for 2 hours, 200 hours, or 2000 hours, Hammerdins are top tier. They're so good at so many things, it's obnoxious, and you're probably going to see them everywhere. So keep on watching and you can look like everyone else at the party. Now when I say the best character, I put best in quotation marks because that's just an opinion. The true best character is the one you have the most fun playing. Obviously you can make an absolute legend of a character if you're rich, but it takes a while to get rich, so I left out the expensive setups when I was figuring out what the best character is. Your time matters to me. And a lot of characters are best at doing specific things, but Hammerdons are great at almost everything without being terribly expensive. In my research for this video, I looked through hundreds of Hammerdon tutorials. Big shocker, I'm not the first guy to make one. Plenty of them tell you what to use, but I couldn't find anything that tells you why, in a simple, quick way that would make sense to a new or returning player. Also, I couldn't find a straightforward guide on how to duel as a Hammerdon, so this video will cover all of that in a way that makes sense. And whether you're a noob or an expert, hopefully you'll learn something useful. Here are the timestamps if you want to skip around. My goal here is to show you the best Hammerdon setups for different situations. I'm going to spend the most time on the farming setup and how to get rich fast, and that's the one I'll start with. But we'll also learn how to solo ubers, how to duel people, and finally, what to wear if you're poor and just starting out. But first, let's ask why. What makes Hammerdens so good? To put it simply, Hammerdens are effortlessly powerful. Hammerdens are great for finding gear. Hammerdens can level themselves without any help. There's hardly any place they struggle to clear. <clears throat> On that last point, when you unlock the highest difficulty level, Hell Mode, you'll find that almost every monster there is immune to at least one of the six types of damage you can do in this game. This is a barrier that breaks even the most powerful characters, but hardly any of those monsters are immune to magic, which conveniently is the type of damage that Hammerdens use. As a result, in Hell difficulty, even a Hammerdin with terrible gear can go to most of the areas with the best loot drops and clear them out quickly. For comparison, a cheap Blizzard Sorceress setup can only go to a few of the places on that list without struggling. Hybrid setups can go to a lot more of the places, but early on they can't kill the act bosses as quickly. I'm working on a sorceress video, but long story short, she can naturally learn teleport and skip straight to the bosses. This makes her the best starter character for getting rich in my opinion. If you're obsessed with efficiency, you may want to start with her until you gear up your hammerdon and then let him take over the farming. There are some other top tier starter builds that are very efficient at farming specific areas, but bottom line, the ability to teleport speeds everything up. As a Hammerdon, you can also get Teleport, after hours of grinding and trading for the runes to make this one piece of armor. But while you're working on that, you can still go to plenty of places where you don't need to teleport, like the Cow Level, Traven Call, and Chaos Sanctuary. Those are some of the best places to get those runes you need, and it's a solid way to gear up all your characters. Another advantage is, Paladins have good breakpoints, which are the amount of a stat you need in order to be faster at something. For instance, your hammer throwing speed and teleport speed are determined by the stat Faster Cast Rate, or FCR for short. With 0 FCR, you teleport pretty slowly, but as you put on more gear with the FCR stat, it gets faster. For example, you need at least 125 to get the fastest teleporting and hammer throwing speed. Also, Paladins naturally have the best breakpoints for blocking. A Paladin with just one point into Holy Shield can easily block at the fastest blocking speeds in the game. So we're going to take advantage of that. And Holy Shield makes it easy for him to have incredibly high defense, so he's hard to hit. In this game, the most powerful bosses are called Ubers, and it can take a team of people to kill them but I'll show you how to get rich by killing them on your own with a Hammerdon. Turns out, Hammerdons are also good at killing other people playing the game, if you're dueling or just feeling devious. And if you're feeling generous, they're top tier at fully rushing people through the game. Overall, Hammerdons are super easy to play. You pretty much just spam your hammer attack. If you want a character that's pure fun and joy to play, then this might not be the right guide for you. 
But if you want to set up an overpowered character that's possibly the best in the game, and you want to do it right out of the gate, then stay a while and listen. First, we'll look at the skills and stats. All the gear setups we're going to look at use the same skills. There are a lot of great variations on this skill set, but today we're going to look at a pure Hammerdin. I'll use this token to reset my Hammerdin skills, and I'll keep the stat screen up so you can see how the skill points affect hammer damage. After one point into a prerequisite, you learn the attack Blessed Hammer, so you put 20 points in to max that first. It's pretty much the only attack you use. This releases a hammer that flies out in the same spiral pattern no matter which way you're facing. You release the hammers on your north side, so if you're trying to hit something specific, you go underneath them and then you blast them. A hammer doesn't stop when it hits something, it pierces through and just keeps on going, so it's perfect for clearing large areas quickly. You basically want to lure enemies into your huge minefield of flying hammers. Hammers are also boosted by Vigor, so one point into each of those prerequisites, and then max that too. Vigor is useful for getting around fast, it basically turns you into an Olympian sprinter, and it works everywhere. Hammers are also boosted by Blessed Aim, so you max that. Blessed Aim actually has a hidden attack rating bonus, but that doesn't really matter to us here because it doesn't affect hammers. And the other thing you want to max is concentration. Remember, you can only turn on one aura at a time, with a few exceptions. So you want to make sure the concentration aura is active before you throw hammers, because it gives a massive damage boost to them, as you can see. It also helps your allies if they're standing close to you. So with our four main skills maxed, we have some points remaining. There are some skills I usually put one point into, like the Redemption Aura, which takes dead monsters on the ground and turns them into health and mana for you. And then the monsters go to heaven, maybe? Is heaven that easy to get into? Honestly, I don't know what the story is with that one. If I wanted my heaven to be full of monsters, I'd play Diablo 3. But the Redemption Aura is incredibly useful, just don't invest more than a point into it. I already had put one point into Cleansing on my way to Vigor, but I want to mention it because Cleansing is like an antidote to being poisoned or cursed. It doesn't always work instantly, but it is useful. Also, I always put one point into Fanaticism for the Ubers, and I put one point into Smite, which I use for the same reason. Smite is a weak but uninterruptible attack where you literally swing your shield at them. Smite stuns and hits every time. It can deliver a crushing blow, so it's handy for Ubers. We'll also put one point into Charge. If you don't have Teleport yet, that one's useful for getting around fast, and it's also good in duels. So now with all the rest of our points, we want to put them into Holy Shield. This skill is awesome because it lasts for a really long time and it massively boosts your defense and chance to block. Always cast this before you go into battle and you'll be hard to hit. For your stats you will put enough into strength to wear gear, enough into dexterity to max block, the rest into vitality and nothing into energy. When you're figuring out how many points to put into dexterity, make sure you used battle command if you have call to arms, make sure you're back to your main weapon and shield, then always make sure you've activated your holy shield. Put the points into dexterity until you get this little stat here to say 75% total block chance. 75% is the maximum in this game and that's how you max block. To keep it at 75, you have to put in a point or two each time you level up. Whatever you have left, you put into vitality. Because in this game, you want to get a lot of hit points. Okay, the main gear setup I want to show you is the farming build, which is one of the most common builds you'll see because it's so good. The point of the farming setup is to get rich, but you have to get a little rich to afford the farming setup. When I say rich, I'm not talking about real world money, I'm not talking about the gold the game uses, and I'm definitely not talking about crypto. In this game, I define being rich as having items that are in demand by other players, or items that are best in slot for your characters. If you're just starting out, I'll show you a more affordable setup later in this video, but this farming setup is what you're working toward. The armor and weapons might take a while to get, but once you get them, you have an end game character that's top tier at almost everything. The armor is of course Enigma, because it gives you teleport. You want to put that in one of these three types of lightweight armor. For Hammerdens, we mainly want three things from our equipment. Skills, resistances, and FCR. For example, you have all three of those stats on your main weapon, the Heart of the Oak, or HOTO for short. Plus the skills is a high priority, because it's the only stat that makes your hammers more powerful. Your weapon's raw damage has absolutely no effect on your hammer damage, no matter how strong it looks. The only way to get more hammer damage is from higher skill points. And resistances are important, because they reduce the elemental damage you take. When you get to Nightmare and Hell difficulty, the game subtracts a lot of points from your resistances. So stack up resistance gear, and you won't get immediately murdered by everything there. And thirdly, you'll want gear with FCR. You want to hit the 125 FCR breakpoint by equipping an arachnid belt which has 20, a ring that has 10, train your mage fist gloves for 20, your hodo has 40, and your main shield is a spirit with a perfectly rolled 35, which gets us to 125 total. You can put the spirit rune ward into any of the elite shields, preferably in a sacred targe with resistances. In old school Diablo, you cannot make this shield unless you play on ladder, otherwise it won't turn into a rune ward. 
They announced that this won't be the case for the first ladder season in D2 Resurrected, but it's possible they make this ladder only in later seasons. In any case, there are probably going to be some things that you can only do in ladder, so I recommend that you start your character off in ladder. Another popular shield for this is... The Herald of Zacharoon! Which would give you more hammer damage, but you wouldn't teleport as fast, so I don't use it. Cool name, though. For the rest of your gear, you're focused on skills, resistances, and magic find. For the other ring, you want a BK ring or a Stone of Jordan. For boots, I use War Travelers for their magic find. For the amulet, you'll want Maras with as much resistance as you can get. An expensive option is to get a crafted amulet with 2 to Paladin skills, and at least 10 to FCR. You'd want a lot of dexterity and fire resistance out of this too if possible. Then you could use another BK or SOJ ring instead of that FCR ring. You would be more powerful with this since it squeezes another skill level out, but you'll probably have lower resistances and I'm not going to make you find an amulet this expensive just to be good at farming. If you want to farm while looking like a boss with expensive gear, check out my Uber Tesla video. And for the helmet you'll want this green shower cap known as Harlequin Crest, which most people just call a Shaco. I recommend getting Larzuk and Act 5 to socket it, and then you can put one of these runes in it. For damage reduction I stuck a bear rune in this one, or burr rune? Last time I got some flack for calling it a bear rune, but that's what I've always called it, so that's the pronunciation you're getting in this video. I'll work on myself later, but there's really no right answer here, it's whatever rune you prefer. On your backup switch, use a call to arms weapon and use another spirit shield. This backup spirit shield doesn't need to be any good, you're just using it for its plus 2 to skills. You're also using call to arms because it gives you the skills battle command and battle orders, which you always want to buff yourself with before battle. Bonus points if you can put the call to arms into a scepter that has plus 3 to holy shield, or plus anything to redemption so you won't have to put that one skill point into it. For your mercenary, use an act 2 mercenary. They're the best because they can use some big poking sticks that are really useful, they all have funny names, and they're the only ones with auras. I recommend using one with a might aura to give him more damage, and another good option is the holy freeze one to slow down nearby enemies. For his weapon, use the insight room word for its automatic mana regeneration aura, which is active for both of you when equipped. For his armor, use Ethereal Fortitude and either Andy's Helm or Vamp Gaze. You want him to have lifesteal in the helmet. They can take more hits with Vamp Gaze, but with Andy's Helm they'll be faster and strong enough to equip better gear. Ideally, you want your mercenary's stuff to be Ethereal, because even though Ethereal stuff cannot be repaired, it has better stats and your mercenary actually cannot break them. For your charms, you want a Nihilus, Hellfire Torch, and also a Geet's Fortune for its magic find. I like to keep the rest of my inventory clear because I want to pick up stuff without being annoyed, but you can get Paladin Combat skill Grand Charms if you want higher hammer damage. Charms that boost resistances, life, hit recovery, and magic find are also some good options. My fully geared Hammerdin with only the three main charms does 12,000 damage per hammer and launches almost three hammers per second. Each hammer can hit multiple targets, so when you put all that together most hordes of monsters will be almost instantly cleared, and then you can pick up all that treasure. So how do you get rich fast? I covered it in more detail in my video called Get Rich Fast. But the short version is, to get rich you want specific gold and yellow items, high runes and rune words, and uber quest items. You can get those by getting high magic find, by clearing out the best loot places, and by farming the ubers and keys respectively. And hammerdens can do all three pretty well. Out of the 33 runes, you're hoping to find the highest ones. When you put specific combinations of runes into socketed items, you get massive bonuses, and this is called a rune word. Rune words with perfect stats can trade for a lot more than the runes that were used to build them. As a Hammerdin, you really want the runes Jaw and Bear, because you need them to build the Enigma rune word. But those are kind of your bottleneck because they can each take a really long time to find. The Countess in Act 1 drops runes, but not the highest ones. The Hellforge quest drops one rune every time, but again not the highest, and it can only be completed once per character in Hell difficulty. A lot of Hammerdins will fully rush other players in exchange for their Hellforge rune, since it has decent odds of getting a lesser high rune. If you want to rush people, then you take these waypoints to go to these places and do these things. Sometimes the person you're rushing needs to be present for the things. If you really like who you're rushing, you can sweeten the deal and do the optional stuff. You can also combine two or three of the same rune in your cube, sometimes with a specific gem, to get the next highest rune. But you'd have to do a lot of that to get the highest runes. Other than that, the best places to find runes are these areas where anything can drop, which a hammered in is awesome at. And in general, killing stuff fast helps your odds more than having high magic find. Also, if you play on Battle.net, you can get the stuff you really need by trading for it. There are some socketed armors and weapons with grey titles that people will overpay for if they're trying to make a rune word. Also, people will sometimes trade good stuff for a huge pile of perfect gems or junk jewels. Also, you can craft a caster amulet using this recipe, and you're hoping to get 2 to a class of skills and at least 10 faster castrate. Your odds of making a good one are better at a higher level, and people will trade you for those. 
there are some good strategies for getting a lot of value out of your trading. For instance, when you kill the Ubers, 100% of the time, they drop an overpowered item called the Hellfire Torch. I usually farm these torches and then trade some of them to get the runes I need. To do the Uber event, you start by killing these three bosses over and over in Hell Mode. They each have a different key, and it's something like a 10% chance for them to drop it when they die. Nail Thack is the hardest of these three because he uses Corpse Explosion, but you can prevent that by using Redemption on the bodies before he explodes them. So you want to get three of each key, or nine keys total, then go to town in Act 5 and create three red portals by combining those keys in your cube. There's a mega boss in each one of these portals with an astronomical amount of hit points, and they heal fast, so your standard hammered in gear won't quite cut it. We're gonna need a change of clothes. For these mega bosses, you want to get the stats Crushing Blow and Life Tap. It's hard to kill Ubers without these two stats. You can get both from this prohibitively expensive rune ward, Last Wish. Or you can get them by changing into a few cheap pieces of gear. I recommend getting the Life Tap you need from Dracul's Gloves, and getting the Crushing Blow you need from Giaume's Helmet, and then Gore Rider or Goblin Toe Boots, and the Black Rune Ward for your weapon. Do not put black into a sword, like I accidentally did. It only works in maces, clubs, and hammers. The fastest weapon for black is a flail, or its upgraded versions. Weapon damage is irrelevant when you're smiting. For ubers, we just want to smite as fast as possible, so I used a normal flail when I made it. You can smite as fast as possible if you use the black, and at least a level 4 fanaticism aura, and 45% attack speed. We'll get that attack speed from armor with the treachery rune ward. The other big reason we use this armor is because it can cast fade, which adds 60 to all resistances. If you want to trigger that before doing ubers, you can go next to that random angel in hell, and you can set yourself on fire. There are a couple of weapons that you can find and use instead of black. You'll still need a certain level of fanaticism to get the fastest smiting speed with these. There's the Heaven's Light Mighty Scepter, which can have two sockets, and if you put shale runes in those sockets, then you can get max smite speed without treachery. Another weapon for this is the Astrion's Iron Ward Caduceus. Don't you just love these names? You can put a Shale Rune in this, and 20% more attack speed, and get Smite speed without treachery. Another stat you absolutely need for Ubers is Cannot Be Frozen, which you can get from a Ravenfrost Ring, or from putting the expensive Cham Room into your gi into your helmet. A couple of quick things to mention. Your belt choice won't make or break you, but Verdungos and even String of Ears are great belts for this. Some people put on a T-Gods belt to raise their max lightning resistance and absorb, since Mephisto will be lowering all of your resistances, and lightning is the one that can really get out of hand. Also, if you need life tap, you can get 10 charges of it from the Marowak boots, and there are some other cheap items like wands that have charges of life tap. The expensive exile shield has a chance to cast it too. So, okay, you have your uber gear on, now you want to go into these portals, find the mega bosses, turn on your fanaticism aura, and hold down your smite attack until you kill them. With 4 smites per second, 100% of them dealing crushing blows, some casting lifesteal, with cannot be frozen, and resistances off the chart, you should be set to solo ubers with this cheap gear. Throw hammers at the minor minions, use redemption to heal when you need to, and make sure to smite pit lords since they're immune to hammers. The mega bosses each drop an organ, you get an eyeball, a brain, and a horn. Combine those in your cube, and you've finally opened the portal to uber tristram. Once you're in, try to split up the three ubers, and then pick them off one by one, by doing the same thing activating fanaticism and holding down smite. Crushing Blow reduces their life by a percentage each time you smite, so that last sliver of life takes the longest. The last uber you kill drops a torch. Currently, on Battle.net Ladder, an unidentified torch can usually trade for one of the lesser high runes or somewhere in that ballpark. Take that with a grain of salt though, because it kinda depends on how long ago they reset the ladder season. If you do identify it, you're hoping it has close to 20 attributes and 20 resistances, because those are worth more. Paladin torches are currently the most valuable, followed by sorceress torches. We'll have to wait and see what the market is like, but my point is, farming these torches and keys can generate a lot of value for you online. The takeaway here is, whenever I'm farming with a hammered in, I clear the Chaos Sanctuary, kill Bale, kill the key bosses, and sometimes kill the council and do cow level, and then repeat. And then when I get enough keys, I do ubers, and I try to trade my stuff for better stuff. So that's how to get rich, but why do you want to get rich? What's the point? Well, I like to be rich so I can get the best gear to smack down other players in duels. Dueling in D2 can be a lot of fun. It's a fast-paced rush, and it's a thrill if you're a competitive person. You don't have to be rich to be good at it, but being rich helps. Before the remaster, some of the dueling KO moves are centered around a glitch called desynchronization, where you appear to be in a different place than you actually are. In a perfect world, the remastered version will get rid of this bug, so I won't cover it in detail. 
but I will say that currently in old school D2, the glitch can happen a lot for people who charge while using Vigor. Now if you want to duel with your Hammered In, you're going to use similar gear as the farming setup, except instead of Magic Find, you prioritize damage reduction and faster hit recovery. The best dueling helmet for a Hammered In is the Crown of Ages because it has both. This crown for kings looks way better than that sad Robin Hood cosplay thing you had on. I am not a merry man! The crown can have one or two sockets, you ideally want two, and most people socket them with bear runes to get even more physical damage reduction. But this thing is heavy, so you might want to use one of those sockets to put in a minus 15 requirements jewel, because if not, you'll have to put extra points into strength to wear it. Also, you'll want waterwalk boots for all the life they give. Just like with the farming build, a 210 FCR amulet plus a BK or SOJ ring will make your hammers more lethal, if you can afford it. If you're dueling, go ahead and fill your inventory with charms. Just make sure your total hit recovery adds up to at least 86 so you can reach that breakpoint, and then get as much life, resistance, and bonus combat skills as possible. Even if you hit your max resistances, you want to keep stacking them if you're dueling because a lot of people can lower your resistances. In fact, many dueling hammerdens prefer to put 10 points into their resist lightning or resist fire auras because these passively raise their max resistance to those things. I'm not going to do that because I'd rather have more defense by leaving those 10 points into holy shield. And don't think too hard about your mercenary, that dude's gonna die so fast. A lot of the rest of your setup is situational, based on your opponent. For example, if you're fighting against characters that use fire, lightning, or cold, then you can put on absorb gear. Some people consider that to be bad mannered, if that matters to you. If you're playing against melee characters, then you might want to throw on a Verdungo's Belt for its damage reduction. Damage reduction is like a resistance, but for physical attacks, and it's capped at 50%. Also, a lot of Hammerdens have a Widowmaker bow as their backup weapon, like the Hammerden I'm up against here. And they shoot guided arrows, which forces their opponent to play more aggressively. A lot of hybrid setups have different attacks in their arsenal, but in this video, we're just gonna talk about hitting them with hammers. On PC, you can only use teleport with your right click button. Concentration Aura also takes up that right click slot, and you want it to be active when you launch hammers. So after you teleport, you want to be diligent about flipping to concentration before you launch the hammers. Okay, we're ready to go. When you duel as a hammered in, sometimes you want to play defensively and keep your distance, and sometimes you want to teleport on top of them and kill them at point blank, which is known as a telestomp. You don't want to telestomp melee fighters, that doesn't go well. Instead, you stay out of their range, but get close and try to lure them into your hammers. Since you release hammers on the north side, your south side is the most vulnerable to melee attacks like charge, so protect yourself. In my opinion, most melee builds are an easy matchup to fight against, except for some well-played barbarians with a lot of health. For them, you just have to be patient and stay away from their whirlwind attack. Hammerdens don't have a great matchup against elemental wind druids, and you ideally want those to chase after you. Wind druids are going to try to telestomp you, so they can feed you to their zoo of animals and tornadoes. But one way to deal with that is to kill off their pets first, then telestomp them while they're panicking trying to resummon the pets. Against some characters, you want to play aggressively and telestomp them. It takes finesse to successfully do this against some assassins, bone necros, and energy shield sorceresses, but it will be fairly easy to telestomp a lot of other matchups, like sorceresses without energy shield. I've never played this game on a controller, but on PC, I telestomp by right clicking teleport on their name, which teleports me directly to them. Then as fast as I can, I flip on concentration, and I present a hammer to their face. The pros use a technique called name locking to do this. Name lock. This term is important for dueling, so remember it. To name lock, you simply click on them and hold down, and then you'll see their name show up in red. Even if the enemy goes off screen, you'll still have them targeted as long as you're still holding it down. They will have to go really far away before you lose that lock. If you name lock them with certain skills, your next teleport will be directly on top of them. Unfortunately, you lose your name lock as soon as you teleport so you want to be ready to immediately click after teleporting to name lock again. By doing this, you can chain together a bunch of name locks. This is easiest if you keep the cursor by your knees and target them as soon as you teleport on top of them. I'll show you two ways to use the name lock telestomp technique. Name locking with the right click is easier, but with the left click is better for hammerdens. Both of these techniques worked and resurrected when I tried them on the beta. beta. I'll show you the easier way first. To right click name lock, first have concentration up on right click, then right click on the enemy and hold to name lock. While holding, drag your cursor to your knees. While still holding, change your right click skill to teleport. While still holding, teleport once. Teleport breaks your name lock, so let go of your right click name lock. Mid teleport, immediately switch back to concentration, and then either hammer them or restart after step one. The advantage of this way is, you can always have hammers active on the left click. 
This works very fast, but the problem is, once you're on top of them, you have to choose between hammering them or keeping them name locked. If you attack, it's easy for them to run away. You can hold down your left click button to name lock them with hammers, but if you tap right click to teleport while doing this, instead of teleporting on top of them, you just lose the name lock. Unfortunately, a lot of left click skills do this, but some don't. The second way solves that problem. This way is harder, but it's how people who are much better at the game than me do it. I'm not skilled enough to properly demonstrate this during a duel, so instead we'll go through it step by step against this unassuming mana shrine. First you have throw or a melee attack like smite on left click. Then you left click on your target and hold to name lock. I usually hold down shift to be still while I do this. While holding the name lock, drag the cursor to your knees. While still holding, change the right click to teleport. While still holding, tap right click to teleport once. Let go of your left click name lock, since the teleport made you lose the lock. Then mid teleport, immediately turn on concentration on right and hammer on the left. Then left click them with the hammer and hold. They should already be where your knees are. Finally, keep holding the left click and switch to throw when they move away, and then repeat the process after step 2. This way lets you keep your hammer name lock by turning it into a throw name lock before you teleport and let go. The downside is, your guy has nothing to throw, so he'll be saying, I can't, and impossible. I can't. Nobody wants that negativity in their lives. Impossible. Also, this is kind of hard to get the hang of, because you're switching out abilities on both sides, and you're trying to do all these steps in a fraction of a second. It takes a lot of practice, and you can practice it on monsters, but with either method, you can really boil it down to four steps. You just name lock, teleport, concentration hammer. 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 Sometimes don't name lock, but still do concentration hammer. If you don't use teleport, it's still not hard. You just charge, hammer, hammer, charge, hammer, hammer, charge. That's another thing that's great. You don't need perfect gear to duel as a hammered in. You can just charge around, throwing a hammer here and there, and you can kind of control an area with them. Sometimes the sneakiest hammers are the best hammers. So that's how to duel as a pure hammered in. In my experience, many of the hammered ins I duel against are not purely hammered in, but hybrid setups. The YouTuber Cooley, or Cooley, has a lot of great videos exploring these hybrid setups. He doesn't include much filler, and he doesn't compulsively try to sing to you like I do. So his channel is a good resource for dueling. So, those setups I showed you are great and all, but what if you're just starting fresh? If you're brand new to the game, don't worry about getting the best gear. Just have fun. For me, I have to beat the game in all three difficulties and have a level 80 character just to start doing the stuff I want to do. But frankly, I miss what it felt like to play this game before I knew so much about it. So don't let my obsession for efficiency rob you of that experience. Having said that, I still have a few tips to point you in the right direction. If you're new to the game and you're lost trying to figure out what stuff to pick up, then a good rule of thumb is to look at the color of the item's title. Normally gold is better than green and yellow, which is better than blue, which is better than white. There are so many exceptions to that, but usually this hierarchy is the case because of the stats you want. Earlier I said these are the most important stats for your hammered in. Here are a bunch of other stats that are great, in no particular order. But for this segment, I'm going to demote FCR. Not because it did a bad job, but because if you're just starting out, you're a long way off from getting the Enigma armor, so you don't have teleport, and that was the main thing we wanted all that FCR for. In the early parts of the game, I just make low level rune words. It's the most reliable way to get powerful early on. You build these from runes that start dropping everywhere after Act 1, and the Countess drops runes like every time. It's probably rude for you to break in during her spa day, but you can defeat her over and over and then combine the lower runes to get the ones you need, so you don't have to rely on getting lucky. Hands down, the best low-level rune word is Spirit. You make it by putting these runes in this order into a four-socketed shield or sword. And anytime you make a rune word, make sure you're putting it into an item with a gray title, or it won't work. It's unlikely to find a shield that's better than Spirit, and if you do, just go make a better Spirit, it's really cheap. The only thing that's possibly better is... <laughs> which you won't find until later. If you don't feel like having one of those amazing shields, and you want to see some other options, then... You're a high-maintenance person. I already showed you what's best. What do you want me to do? Research every unique item and rune word in the game so I can make a bunch of tier lists for you? <laughs> Give me a break. So, in our tier list of shields, below that we have some other shields and low-level rune words, which are alright. Just use a spirit. You can also put spirit into a four-socketed sword, so do that for your weapon. While you're working on this sword, there's some low-level junk you can put on, but again, this is going to be the best thing you can equip for a long time. Like I said earlier, Hoto is the ideal weapon for a Hammerden, and CTA is the best backup weapon. But those are kind of expensive to make, 
There are some late game weapons that are better than your spirit sword, and some that are more or less on par with it. Wizard Spike is another fantastic weapon, and it drops all the time. When you first get into Hell difficulty, you may want Wizard Spike more than your Spirit Sword, because it adds an incredible 75% to all resistances, which you badly need at that point. For your armor, the Stealth Rune Word gives a bunch of stats that are really useful in the early game. I make this every time I solo play through the game. Smoke and Treachery are also great if you need resistances. Eventually you can replace these with armor that gives plus to skills. Enigma is your long term goal. In the meantime, I'd say Viper Magi is probably the best unique armor for Hammerden. Skulder's Ire is a good option if you want to boost your magic find, and obviously some expensive stuff is good too, but if you're that rich, just make an enigma. For your helmet, lore is a good low level rune word because of its plus one skills. These helmets are as good as that, these helmets are even better, and these helmets are the best, for Hammerden. The rest of your equipment cannot be socketed, so there are no rune words. And remember, these tier lists are Hammerden specific. Go ahead and pause if you need to. Here are some good amulets, and some good belts, and some good gloves, and some good rings, and some good boots. On the boots, I'm a little biased toward run walk speed. I really like ones that give plus 40 to that, because it's more efficient if you can get around fast. For your mercenary, get knack 2 mercenary. As soon as they're level 27, you can give them the cheap insight rune word, which is an absolute game changer because it recharges mana. There is a weapon called Reaper's Toll that's arguably on the same level because it casts Decrepify. I've also seen some setups that use obedience, but I prefer insight, no tier list needed here. For the mercenary's helmet and armor, you want high resistances and lifesteal if possible, so they won't die all the time. Also, at a very early level before you make your spirit sword and shield, there are a few sets that come in handy. The Hussaris set gives you a massive defense bonus if you're wearing more than one piece of it, and the complete set gives you even more awesome stuff like cannot be frozen. And the Klegolaz set is great for early levels where it's all about the melee attacks. Also, Death's set is overpowered at low levels, especially the belt. The full set gives you a lot of resistance and lifesteal. Okay, so that's what you wear. Now what do you do? Well, you want to beat the game. Then you go to the next difficulty, so you can beat the game. Then you go to the next difficulty, so you can beat the game. And then you try to find good stuff. In all three difficulties, you cannot go where the final boss is until you're a certain level. The quickest way to level up is by joining games with people who are clearing out the same areas over and over. So here are some common areas that people go to level up. And hopefully you know someone who can rush you through the game. You don't learn Blessed Hammer until level 18, so you're going to rely heavily on melee attacks up to that point. If you're trying to play through the game on your own as fast as possible, then you can start out as a Holy Fire Zealot Paladin, which uses these skills. This makes normal difficulty a breeze. Eventually, you can have Akara in Act 1 reset your skill points. Then you can invest those points into Hammerden skills. You can only do this reset once per difficulty, so don't be careless with it. If you want to save your reset for later, that's fine. Hammerdens need one point into Might, so you can just spin your first skill point on that and keep it active to juice up your normal attack move, and save up skill points until level 18 when it's hammer time. It goes by pretty fast. And then once you're at a high enough level to play comfortably in Hell difficulty, you can clear out the Chaos Sanctuary and Cows over and over, since Hammerdens can do those places fast. Gradually, you'll find the best items for your Hammerden. So now that I've explained the entire game to you, I should point out that Hammerdens have a few weaknesses. Hammerdens are bad against magic immunes. For instance, you have to rely on Smite or your Mercenary to kill Bale's second wave of minions. Also, it's hard for hammers to hit stuff in tight places and narrow corridors. You need more space for them to really be effective. You can telestomp them if you have Enigma, but even that doesn't work sometimes. Another weakness is that they're not the most exciting to play. Throwing magic spinning hammers from a different dimension sounds pretty interesting in theory, but after doing that one attack over and over again, I found myself wanting to play a more dynamic character. Basically, I'm saying that Hammerdens are pretty easy to play, which is more of a strength than a weakness. Overall, they have very few weaknesses. They're probably the best all-around character in the game, and they're a solid pick for your first character since they can make you rich pretty fast. So to summarize this video, if you're starting out, you can just make most of the starting gear I showed you, and gradually replace it with farming gear. Then farm and do ubers until you're rich enough to get a competitive dueling build, and you'll be overpowered every step of the way. All of that is why Hammerdens are more than just useful. They just may be the best in the game. And now you can be the best too. So there you have it. I cover a lot of ground in these videos, and I pulled from a lot of different sources when I made this. The last thing I want to do is spread false information. So if I made any mistakes or left anything out, let me know in the comments, and I'll use the video description below to keep a running tab of my failures. Looks like D2 Resurrected is coming out tomorrow? <laughs> All right. Well, this game isn't going to binge itself, so I better get to it. Me and my Hammerdon will see you there.